Ms. Feiner, um, I was listening to some of my colleagues. So the OxyContin part of the opioid crisis began apparently south of the border. Is that right? Um, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, the, the opioid crisis began with prescription opioids and largely with Purdue's misconduct around selling OxyContin. And I think we can look that, to- but, but they were located south of the border, right? Port <laughs> no, they were not. They were located oh. right in New York. Oh my Lord. Oh, well, goodness. I wouldn't know that from their questioning. Um, well, um, so- the source of OxyContin, though, the production of it must be south of the border, right? Nope, right in the United States. I believe that they're oh my in God. Rhode Island and North Carolina. So it's not Mexican or Central American doctors writing these prescriptions. It's actually good old American doctors north of the border? You're correct. Oh, my gosh. Huh. Because, you know, listening to some of my good friends on the other side of the aisle, I had a different impression. Um, and I even thought maybe Purdue Pharma, which really is the heart and soul of the opioid crisis in America that led to the 100,000 deaths this last year alone, uh, I thought it must be based in another country south of the border because listening to the rhetoric of my friends. Well, certainly the opioid crisis began with the presidency of Joe Biden, right? I mean, President Biden, we got to lay this squarely at his feet. This began about a year and a half ago. Is that right? That's incorrect. Uh, I think it started in the late 90s. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I'm learning something every second talking to you, the Spiner. Thank you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about phrases like turbocharge. What was turbocharge about? Who came up with that? McKinsey. McKinsey actually had uh, multiple meetings with Purdue in Purdue's offices at fancy restaurants and, and with the Sacklers. And they told them that the way to maintain a high volume of Oxycontin sales was to turbocharge the sales engine. Um, to motivate their sales force, give them target lists for the highest prescribers in the country and have their sales reps go out and visit them relentlessly and incentivize the sales reps to visit them relentlessly and to stick to their call plans, um, which McKinsey assembled. Um, and, and, and that's what turbocharging was. It was to keep the so, sale of OxyContin going. And by the way, just for the record, is McKinsey headquartered south of the border? No, it is not. Is it right here in this in country? In this country, okay. And did that turbocharge program then uh, sort of morph into something called Evolve to Excellence? It was all part of the same plan to increase OxyContin sales at the time that, the same time that regulators were trying to reduce opioid prescriptions in the United States. And if we can put on the screen, then something was developed, a rewards program called Wildfire. And I even see a picture of our previous president up there. And, and, and are you familiar with this uh, rewards program, Ms. Feiner? Um, I am familiar with the idea that McKinsey looked for many ways to incent sales representatives to um, turbocharge the OxyContin sales, uh, sales and, and this was one of them. And, and they used phrases like cash prizes that are significant and meaningful as part of the rewards program, enormous prestige, and celebrity status within the company if you met certain sales goals. Is that correct? Yes. Um, my time's going to expire, but Mr. Sternfels, 600,000 Americans are dead. Many people are still struggling with addiction. Do you have any regret you want to share with the committee? Thank you, Congressman. I, um, I regret that we didn't um, act sooner, sir. Um, and if I could play this over, I would have put the client protocols in a decade earlier. Um, I would have reached settlement even faster, and we would have pivoted from, um, from serving the manufacturers despite, you know, uh, 
whatever goals there were, and I already apologize for that, to actually being part of the solution. So if it was a grad, it would have been to act sooner, sir. Sure, that's a comfort to those who lost loved ones during this opioid epidemic. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. I, I would 